Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to another video where I take a look at all the new comic books coming out either November 24th or 25th, 2020. And I ask myself the question, what one new comic book would I buy this week if I could buy just one book? Now this video comes out the week of Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Thanksgiving is like my favorite holiday, but this year's Thanksgiving is going to be a bummer because I'm not gonna be able to see my family and we're not gonna have a big feast because of the pandemic. It is a bummer, but my wife and I are gonna to try to make the most of it. I hope that you're able to find your own responsible, socially distant way to enjoy Thanksgiving as well. I wanna start off this week's video with a comment that was left on my last week's video that had a suggestion in it that I actually thought was pretty great. The comment comes from Trey Bush. Trey says, great work as always. Thanks, Trey. Um, he continues, would love to hear what you thought of the previous week's choice before you get started on the new list. Now, these videos have become a little bit too long, but I think this is a good suggestion, so I'm gonna try to work it in and hopefully it won't make this video like stupid long. Last week's pick was Symbiote Spider-Man King in Black number one. Now, did it pay off to be just the one book to buy that week? No. Um, I thought it had potential for story, for context, uh, for King in Black, for backstory on symbiotes, potentially key, potentially having first appearance in it. It really didn't have any of those things. I think what it did more than anything else is set up what is going to be coming down the line from the, from the next, I don't know if there's five or six issues of Symbiote, Spider-Man, King in Black, but with the next issues that come, I think it's basically setting up that story. Um, there were some cool things in it with, you know, with, and there, a lot of it is just hinted at the cover here with, with Kang the Conqueror there and the Watcher and uh, Black Suit Spider-Man and Rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, there's some cool stuff there. So I have, I have, I'm optimistic that the series, the mini series on the whole is going to provide some really great story elements, but they really didn't quite come to fruition in this first issue. In addition, there was some spec, you know, um, specking, I should say, done on the shadowy figure here that you see on the cover. Uh, the thinking that it might be a new symbiote or something like that. Well, it might be a new symbiote. It looks like they took a character that actually already existed in Marvel Comics and have maybe kind of retconned it and they're not changing his story like, oh yeah, 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 that guy's a symbiote. So yes, there may be a new symbiote featured here, but it's not this character's first appearance. This character introduces himself as Mr. E, and this character has appeared in Marvel Comics before once and only once in Marvel Spotlight number nine, I believe from volume number two. Um, now, Key Collector Comics says that that comic in particular has sold 4,150% um, more than this comic book sold the previous week. So yeah, it's on fire now that this guy is in this book. In fact, if you want to go to your local comic book shop Maybe go through the boxes and see if you can't find this book in there. It might be a good one to scoop up because I bet you it wasn't very expensive before, but it's probably going to start getting expensive now. And this character may have more to do, not only just in the Symbiote Spider-Man story, but maybe in the King in Black storyline in general. So it might be one you want to check out and scoop up. Uh, make sure you look out and get the one that has Captain Universe on the cover. So once again, was this a, a knock it out of the park pick for last week? No, but I would say that Symbiote Spider-Man King of Black was a good story, it was a good read, and that the, the mini series does still have potential. So I would still recommend it for anybody that's a Spider-Man fan or a Null fan or a Symbiote fan or just excited about King of Black in general. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about this week are my cover picks. I'm not gonna really say much about my cover picks. I'm basically just gonna show them to you and let you know that they're stuff that I saw that I liked. The first one I wanna point out is The Last God, number 10. This is by Kai Carpenter, and I like it. <laughs> the next one is Wonder Woman 767. This is by a name you've heard very many times in these videos in the cover art section, Joshua Middleton. Although this isn't my favorite one of his, it's still good enough to get mentioned as far as a cover pick is concerned for me. The next one I wanna mention, I'm gonna give a little back 
information on or context for, I tend to shy away from mentioning anything about ratio incentive variance in these videos or store exclusives. Largely in part because I wanna make these videos about books that you can just go into your comic book shop uh, on new comic book day and pick up without like much hassle or pre-ordering or internet ninjutsu or anything like that. But this one I liked a lot, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna feature it a little bit. It's Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Multiverse Who Laughs. Uh, this is the one in 25 variant by Simone Bianchi. I just think it's really cool and creepy and um, had a lot going for it. And I saw one in person and it looked fantastic. So I had to go ahead and throw it on to my list today because I thought it was really cool. The next one I want to mention is X-Men number 15. Uh, the artist is Lenil Francis Yu. Um, I just, this one is not like stellar. This one's not blowing my mind or blowing me away, but I saw it and I just really liked it and I wanted to throw it on the list. And finally, if I had to pick just one book to be my cover pick for this week, it would be from Marvel number two um, by Alex Ross. Alex Ross is just so good. I mean, what 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 do you what needs to be said about Alex Ross that hasn't been said a million times already? This one is actually a little bit even more understated than a lot of his stuff, but it's just so good. I just love his art style so much. I love that it looks painted, but it also looks so realistic at the same time. For those of you that didn't know this, he does tend to take photographs of actual human beings, and then he uses that as kind of like a, a guide for his um, for his art, which is part of the reason that the poses are so well done because he chooses them very specifically and, a, and ahead of time. Also, the lighting is so great because the lighting has been set up so specifically. Um, and also, I think the proportions of the, the people are done so well because he's, he's not drawing over a photograph, but he's using it as reference. And I think it helps his art become the most that it can be. And it's just really good. I like the color palette on this cover. I like even the, the backdrop being just all the titles of different Marvel books I like a lot. Um, I, it's just Alex Ross is really great. And for me, this is a really excellent, albeit simple, example of what is so fantastic about his art. And that's why Marvel's 2 is my cover pick of the week. All right, next, we're going to move on to the number one books that come out this week. And I'm, I'm going to talk about a handful, a decent amount of books, but I'm only going to really get into a few of them. The first one I want to mention is Power Pack, number one from Marvel Comics. Now, I don't think anybody's really chomping at the bit for a Power Pack book, but with the whole outlawed storyline in Marvel right now, with if you don't know what that is, by the way, uh, it's that kids under 18 who are superheroes, it's now illegal for them to be superheroes because they're too young, so they're outlawed. Um, now's the time to bring back a power pack story because they're underage uh, superheroes, and with the outlawed storyline, it's more relevant than ever. Um, so if you're hardcore into the outlawed storyline, this is the book for you. Otherwise, I bet you most people don't care. So. We'll see how well this one does in general. The next one I want to mention is uh, Assassin and Son. This is from Scout Comics. I don't recommend it. I read the description. It's basically uh, a man and his son try to get revenge. Uh, and it sounds really tropey and generic. And uh, I'm not interested. The next one is Billy the Kid, number one, from Acme, Inc. This is a lady, uh, Billy the Kid, um... If you like westerns and you like, you know, revenge stories and, are, and you like stories about women where women aren't usually the, the center of the, that type of story, maybe this is for you. The description does not sound very interesting to me. I just mention it just in case this really does excite you. The next one I want to mention is Black of Heart, number one of five. This is from Source Point Press. Uh, this one also is not interesting to me. It sounds really tropey and generic. It is a 1940s kind of detective noir story um, that sounds like every other 1940s detective noir story that there is. And of course, there is a, a um, what do you call it, a structure to that type of story. And this one seems like it follows it perfectly, which kind of makes me not so interested. The next one I want to mention is a book called I Walk With Monsters. 
Um, this is another one that's kind of like, uh, you killed my brother, I want revenge, and oh, by the way, we turn into monsters and go hunting bad guys that seem to deserve to be hunted and killed. Um, this one was on the edge of interesting to me, but it officially fell off the edge of interesting uh, the more and more I thought about it. But it's out this week. Um, who was that by again? This is from... Um, Vault Comics. So maybe, maybe something to check out, but I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. However, the next one I absolutely would recommend. This sounds really, really interesting. And this would be my new, my new title pick of the week uh, if I was looking for a new title to pick up. The book is called Kaiju Score. Here is the description. It's the most dangerous heist ever attempted. Four desperate criminals are going all in on a once-in-a-lifetime chance to steal millions in art and turn their miserable lives around. The catch? They have to pull it off under the nose of a 1,000-ton kaiju. And a giant monster might just be the least of their problems. Brought to you by James Patrick and Rem Brew, the kaiju score is what happens when a Quentin Tarantino film takes place smack in the middle of a Godzilla movie. This sounds like what I like out of my stories. Fun, action, adventure. Like, it sounds like it could be a really, really exciting and cool read. Um, I recommend checking it out, like I said, if you're looking for a brand new title to give a shot this week. It's from Aftershock Comics. The next one I want to mention is for all of you uh, Rick and Morty fans. Uh, out there. This might be something that you're interested in, and probably if you're not a gigantic Rick and Morty fan, you probably don't care. And it's Rick and Morty presents Jaguar. It's basically Jerry went to some planet and killed everybody on it, and the people from that planet want revenge, and so they hire Jaguar to kill Jerry. That's the description right there. If you like uh, um, Rick and Morty, it's probably a nice little spin-off story that you might enjoy as well. The next one I want to mention, it was actually kind of interesting to me. Um, it was, it almost slipped through the radar in me. I'm gonna, for me, and I'm gonna read the description because it's super short. It's X of Swords Destruction number one. The description reads, the wheel of fortune turns, the unfortunate fall, a sword against the darkness. The wheel of fortune, the wheel of fortune turns. For a second there, I thought it might be a haiku. It's not. Um, but it's an interesting kind of short, cryptic description which kind of gets my spider sense tingling a little bit i'm like is there something that's going to be going on in this book that they can't tell us about and does that make it a little bit more exciting and interesting and that's why this description is so cryptic and so short this is the final installment it's the 22nd of 22 issue uh, 20 the 22nd of 22 issues that's not how you say it, but I'm going to keep going anyways. <laughs> it's, the, it's the final issue of the X of Swords series. Um, and so as a finale, maybe something cool and interesting is going to take place there. Um, we'll see. You know, sometimes endings can just be like, you know, you wrap things up with a bow and you pretend like it never happened. Maybe this will have a little bit something more going on. If you've been reading X of Swords and you're watching this video, I would really like to hear your thoughts on X of Swords down in the comments. Please, please, please. And let me know if you think this book is something that we should all be paying attention to or if it's just going to be kind of the denouement, the falling motion, the, the just the, the, the puttering out of the X of Swords uh, storyline. Let us know in the comments if you're reading that. The next one I want to mention is actually one that was kind of interesting to me. It is a book called The Red. It is from Heavy Metal Dash Virus. Let me read the description. It says, In the distant future, a nuclear war has changed the course of history forever. A single government entity now presides over what's left of the world and prohibits certain content that is deemed emotionally dangerous or red in an attempt to maintain order and keep society working. A collection of gifted musicians who possess the rare ability to create red content discover they are the key to overthrowing the totalitarian government that has taken their emotional freedoms. Now, I read this and I thought it was pretty interesting, but it started to remind me of something. Now, I am a fan of Canadian rock trio Rush. I think they're amazing. 
And they put out an album way back in the 70s called 2112. And what is 2112 about? It's about a society that is kind of controlled by its, you know, totalitarian government. And there is no music in this society until somebody stumbles upon a guitar and thinks, this is fantastic, I should share this with the entire world. And the government's like, no, 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 you won't. That stuff is dangerous. And he's like, mm, yes, I will. Revolution. And he leads a revolution through music. It's a really great album, concept album, by the way. Uh, and if you um, haven't ever heard it, you should check it out. But this story sounds like it's basically 2112, which in and of itself was influenced by or borrowed uh, elements of a book by a person named Ayn Rand called Anthem. So none of these stories are original. They've been in novels. They've been in concept albums. Now they're in a comic book. Um, maybe it'll be great. Maybe it won't. But I thought it was kind of interesting. The whole, like, for me, the 2112 comparison was one I couldn't pass up mentioning to all of you in this video. Uh, the next one uh, that comes out this week that's new is um, The Witcher, Fading Memories. Um, if you're a fan of The Witcher, if you're a fan of the video game or the television show, if you're a big fan of that kind of stuff, you'll probably uh, like this comic book. If you're not, you're not going to care at all. I read the description. Nothing about it was particularly interesting to me. But I could see that if you're such a, if you're a really, really big fan of The Witcher and the Witcher universe, then this, of course, will be exactly up your alley. The last book that I want to mention uh, in the new series that come out this week is The Other History of the DC Universe, number one. Now, I'm going to read the description. It's long, but I think it's going to tell you everything you need to know. Academy Award-winning screenwriter John Ridley, 12 Years a Slave, Let It Fall, examines the mythology of the DC universe in this compelling new miniseries that reframes iconic moments of DC history and charts a previously unexplored sociopolitical thread as seen through the prism of DC superheroes who come from traditionally disenfranchised groups. This unique new series presents its story as prose, note that, by Ridley, married with beautifully realized illustrations by Giuseppe uh, Camuncoli and Andrea Cucci. Issue number one follows the story of Jefferson Pierce, the man who will one day become Black Lightning, as he makes his way from being a young track star to a teacher and ultimately to his role as a hero. Future issues focus on characters such as Karen and Maul Duncan, Tatsu Yamashiro, and Rene Montoya. Extensively researched and masterf masterfully executed, the other history of the DC Universe promises to be an experience unlike any other. You may think you know the history of the DC Universe, but the truth is far more complex. The other history of the DC Universe isn't about saving the world, it's about having the strength to simply be who you are. I think this is good. I think that we're focusing more on, on characters that, like they say, are from traditionally disenfranchised groups. I think that this is that could be interesting. My one thing is that I hope it's not too heavy-handed. I hope that the focus is on good storytelling and not like too much on the socio-political elements. But we'll see. If you pick this up and you read it and you think and you have an opinion about it, I would love to hear about it from you down in the comments. I am not going to be picking it up and I am not going to be reading it, but I would be very interested in talking to somebody who did. So like I said, if you check it out, please, please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is something that I'm really excited about this week. Um, this week uh, features on the 25th, Local Comic Shop Day. Now, Local Comic Shop Day is something that happens every single year. It's basically a way to help um, promote local comic shops, you know, just in case you didn't already know this. Um, being a comic shop order owner is, um, it's, it's tough. The margins are tight. And uh, you don't become super rich owning a comic book shop. You uh, do it because you love it. And they can use all the support that we can give them, especially with places like eBay already out there, giving them so much competition. 
um, it's great to go and support your local comic book shop. And this is a great excuse to go and maybe make a couple extra purchases at your comic book shop to help their bottom line just a little bit while you're there. Let me read the description from the local comic book shop day website. It says, Local Comic Shop Day 2020 is going to be a little different than past years. According to Marco Davanzio, the D Davanzo, Executive Director of Comics Pro, the organization that runs Local Comic Shop Day, the goal is still the same, to get comic fans into their local shop for the holidays to celebrate the local comic shop. But Local Comic Shop Day 2020 has a new look. First of all, it's on a Wednesday instead of a Saturday, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. The organizers decided that since Wednesday is traditionally the day that new comics come out, that should be part of the celebration. Smart. Also, in order to expand the day to all stores and make sure everybody gets to celebrate, the organizers have eliminated the requirement that stores have to register for the day. Although it is still recommended that stores register so they, uh, so they can get more exposure and potentially get promo items. I think this is a really cool idea. Um, to give, like once again, shoppers a reason to stop into their local comic book shop and pick something up. And the stuff that they're offering, the stuff that different publishers have made available to comic book shops for this special day, a lot of it's really cool. And I'm going to go over the 13 things that I found that were going to be featured from different uh, publishers for local comic shop day. A lot of these are, in I think, in the 5 and $6 range, so they're a little bit more expensive, but they have special covers. A lot of them are just the regular cover, both like foil elements in the title and special things like that. I'm just going to go over the list real fast and show you them so that you can know what might be available at your shop. The first one I mentioned is Ice Cream Man, number 20. Uh, this is a unique cover for local comic shop day. Uh, this was a big hit with the Dr. Seuss stuff, and this is once again another uh, Dr. Seuss cover. We also have Invincible number one from Image Comics. We have Monstrous number one also from Image Comics. Comics. We have Dune House of Trades uh, number two. Uh, from Boom Studios. Now I'm going to point out, you're going to look at these images and you're going to be like, Jeff, that looks just like the B cover. Yes, it does. But keep in mind that these covers are going to be special in some way with some foil element or something to it. So they will be different from the normal covers for these books that are already planned to release this Wednesday, like Dune House Trades number two. There's also from Boom Box Lumberjanes number 75 with a special cover. Then there's Mighty Morphin number one. I believe this is going to be a foil variant, as well as Power Rangers number one, this Momoko cover that I also believe is going to have foil um, elements to it. Then there is the one I'm most excited about myself, Something is Killing the Children, number one with a foil cover. Ooh -wee. I'm going to pick this one up and I highly recommend you do the same. You might even want to contact your comic book store as soon as you finish watching this video and say, are you going to get that book? Because could you please hold one for me? Because getting a hold of a number one in a floppy form outside of the trades that are come, that have come out, it's going to be tough. This book is over a hundred dollars now. Uh, and this might be a wonderful way if you want the kind of smaller individual issue version of it. This is a six dollar version of it. Uh, I'm excited about it just to have it in the collection it might be something you want to take a look at as well as with all of these the next one I want to mention is from image comics it's spawn number 312 with this cover then um, there is the other history of the DC universe here uh, number one this is a variant on that uh, main a cover it's kind of a black and white version of it I think it also has foil elements then there is from uh, The Witcher, Fading Memories from Dark Horse Comics, one of four. Uh, I believe you can kind of see in this one, I think it's a little clearer, you think you can see the, the silver uh, foil elements in the title there. There's also this cover for Exoswords Destruction, which I talked about earlier, um, one that got my spider sense tingling. This is a really cool watercolor cover of uh, magic that we, if I was going to pick the, this book this week, I would pick up this version. I would pay the extra two dollars or whatever, if there, whatever extra it is, and buy this version of it if I thought that this was going to be an exciting book to pick up. 
um, and I recommend it for you. I think that's a cool cover. And finally, this is one, I actually don't even know which company is putting this one out, but it's called True War Stories, uh, Tales of Deployment from Vietnam to Today. This one can be really cool. I actually ran into um, somebody that I know at my local comic shop who is a Marine. Thank you for your service. Um, and he, I showed him the, all the list of this and he saw this one and he goes, well, as a Marine, I'm interested in that one. So that must, might be a good book to pick up for yourself if you're into war stories, if you're in the armed services, or even if you know somebody in the armed services, um, might be a nice gift to give to them as well. So that is all of it for Local Comic Shop Day. Once again, I think it's a really cool thing that's going on with some really excellent books. I'm going to pick up some things to the children. You know what? I might pick up a couple other ones just for the hell of it as well. Not only because I think they're cool and I'll enjoy them for my personal collection, but also to support my local comic shop. I encourage you to do the same. All right, now I want to talk about books that I kind of are on my radar that I just want to make aware, make you aware are coming out this week. Uh, the first one is Scumbag number two. It's coming out this week. I really liked number one. Rick Remender, I thought, knocked it out of the park. It was so fun and a little gross, but then it looked like it, it could really have some really cool uh, action adventure moments coming up in issues to come. And the art was really great as well. I really, really, really enjoyed it. So I highly recommend you pick up issue number two and you go find issue number one as well. And you, if you just like fun, exciting, silly, comic books, man, this one is the perfect one for you. So definitely recommend checking it out. The final two books I'm going to talk about today um, are going to be part of a feature that shows up very frequently in my videos. It is Time in Time. Yes, welcome back to Time in Time. Uh, this week's Time in Time features two books. The first book is I'm finding it real fast. I know it's here somewhere. It's Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Multiverse Who Laughs, number one. I mentioned this book a little bit earlier when I was talking about the 1 in 25 variant. This book is uh, written by lots of different people, including um, Scott Snyder, James Tynan IV, Williamson, Oswald and art with a bunch of different people. It sounds to me like it's going to be a collection of individual stories written and drawn by different people for each story. Um, I think it could be really cool. It's got some great writers on it. Um, and I mean, just look at the cover, man. Just look at the cat at the bottom of a frame with like the yellow eyes and with the, the God knows what flying out of its mouth and the, the Superman charm around its neck. I'm, I'm very interested in seeing that there's a cow there. Oh my gosh, the dogs. I just, it looks so bananas and it looks to be what I love so much about the Dark Knight's Death Metal series in general is that it's just so kind of like out there and wacky, but also like cool and extreme and exciting all at the same time. So um, I, this looks like it's gonna be exactly right up that alley. So it might be something that you check out and also, you know, I like the writer. I like James Tynan. I like uh, Scott Snyder and all these other people as well. So maybe something you check out just for fun, even if you're not currently reading Dark Knight's Death Metal. But finally, the last book I'm going to talk today, uh, talk about today, which is also part of Time and Time. It's my pick that if I could buy just one book this week. Now let me emphasize, this pick is if I could buy just one book. I would buy Department of Truth number three. Now there wasn't like a clear, a clear choice this week for me as a book that I thought was the hottest book or the biggest spec or any coolest thing out there this week. So that's why I went with what I would choose if I could buy just one book. I know I had Department of Truth on my list two months ago or so, um, and, but yes, it's back here again, and it's back for a reason. One, as you know, I like James Tynan a lot, James Tynan IV a lot, and so basically everything he writes is, I think, worthy of purchase as far as I'm concerned. But Department of Truth has been really, really good. I like it a lot. I find it really creepy and interesting, and it was a hardcore page turner for me. Um, and the art from Martin Simons is also perfect for the book. It's so kind of eerie and 
disconnected in a weird way that it suits the tone of the book really, really well. So I've really enjoyed the first two issues that I've read. And I expect this third one to be just as good. And I gotta tell you, I see little blippets of information about future issues. And I see the covers for future issues. And I'm like, man, this book looks like it's gonna be really cool. Some really cool stories uh, coming up in the future. I get more and more excited about it, the more and more information that I get about it. And there was one bit of information that came out recently that got me super, super excited about Department of Truth because as a lot of you may have already uh, paid, may already know from paying attention to my videos, I'm a reader first and foremost. I get excited about writers and stories first and foremost. The art I enjoy very much as well, but I'm a little bit more story and reader centric. But I'm also a collector and I'm also interested in um, retaining value of my comic books. And so this information got me really, really excited. It came from Key Collector Comics and Key Collector Comics wrote, uh, Inside sources tell Key Collector that a high dollar bidding war has ended for the ultra relevant conspiracy theory story, Department of Truth. There is tons of interest on this project that is attracting A-level talent for a movie. That's really cool. From the, the specker in me, I'm really excited as somebody who went all in on Department of Truth. I really hope that the, <laughs> that the value of these books goes way up because I have a few of them. Um, but what I'm going to say to you is that if you are interested in Department of Truth at all, and if this spec... Now, something to grain of salt is that Key Collector is the only people reporting on this news at all. There's no other news articles or information out there at all about any kind of movie deal for Department of Truth. So do take it with a grain of salt. But Key Collector, I have to imagine, has some pretty good sources. So I'm willing to at least go with them on it for now. It has caused uh, the prices of issue number one to spike and go up. Um, the book has seen a 731% increase over the previous week, so people are going out there and picking it up. There's also, here's a little hot tip for y'all. There is a spec opportunity here. The ratio variants for Department of Truth number one are criminally undervalued right now. You can get a one in 10 ratio variant for something like $5. You can get the one in 25 for like $15 and you can get the one in 50 for like $25. And these are some really great covers by some really great artists. Now, the one in 100 variant, which is the Something is Killing the Children homage cover is the one that is holding its value. It's still worth $100 or more. But these other ratios you should really consider scooping up if you have the opportunity to get them for a good price. Because as if this news becomes legitimate, if there does tend to be a movie or something that comes out of this title, you can get these ratios for really cheap right now. And you can potentially see a lot of gain on them. So I know that if I come across one at a good price, I'm going to scoop it up. I recommend you do the same. But back to my pick for this week. Like I said, I'm really excited about this series. I'm really excited about issue number three. Issue number one and two are really great. I'm, I'm interested in issue number three, four, five, six, and so forth. It just seems like it really has a lot of great potential for amazing storytelling from James Tynan IV and also Martin Simons. Uh, and all of these reasons are why, if I could pick, if I could pick just one book this week, I would pick The Department of Truth, number three. Now, if you're not happy with that pick, can you think that there was some better obvious choice that I didn't pick this week? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear what your picks are, guys, very much. Also, like, just if you think that that's, that Department of Truth is amazing and that issue number three is a fantastic pick, let me know that as well. Um, you know, I want to mention something from another comment that I received from somebody last week. It was from, um, from Mahali Seri. 
If I pronounced your name incorrectly, I'm very sorry, Mahali. But Mahali left a comment on last week's video where basically uh, they just said, I will go with Doctor Who number one photo cover, Star Trek Voyager, Seven's Reckoning number one, Death Metal number five, Art Germ, of course, Amazing Spider-Man number 53, and Fantastic Four number 26. Mahali, I thanked you in the comments and I'm gonna publicly thank you. Thank you so much for writing a comment and letting me know what books you're interested in. I would love to hear from everybody who's watching this video what books interest you out there. I find it very interesting for myself to know what people are interested in and I think that other people who watch this video potentially will find it interesting as well. And also I'm going to be 100% transparent with you guys. You people leaving me likes and leaving me comments is good for my channel. It makes YouTube pay more attention, the algorithm pays more attention to my video, and I come up more frequently in people's searches. So, um, first and foremost, I'm interested in the engagement and I'm interested in hearing from you, but also, selfishly, it will help my video. So even if you just leave a comment to say hi, I would really, really appreciate any comment that you could possibly leave. And of course, if you like this video, a like is really appreciated as well. If this is the first one of my videos that you're watching, thank you so much for watching this video and checking in and watching it towards the end. I uh, would invite you to come subscribe. Hit the subscribe guy right here and make sure to hit the notification bell so you're informed about my videos when I post them. Also, if you plan on submitting to CGC or CG CBCS anytime soon, please watch this video and consider sharing your submission with my channel. Thank you all once again for watching this video. Happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you in the next one.